What the hell? Let's have a conversation. Welcome back to another edition of The Conversation on Roku TV. My guest today is from Chicago. Got it right? Got it right. All right. We're, we're moving now. We're moving. Forget it. We're going to keep on going now. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for, and, and you know what? I want to make sure I got this right. Um, did I get, is it songwriter, producer, and musician? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Marzouk Mars Ashanti. There it is, right? Asante, Asante. Asante. There you go. See, I, that's why I had to check it out. You know why I kept on doing that? Because I'm thinking of the female singer. Asha, right. Ashanti. Of, you know, it's, it's a common mistake. Yeah, a lot of people do, but it's all good, bro. It's all good. I apologize for that, man. And you know the bad thing is? I got it written right here in front of me. <laughs> this is crazy, man. So anyway, let's get into this, man. Um, you know what? I really enjoy the music that i heard from you um she's strange i checked out the video but before we get started tell my people where you're from because me and you got a little bit something going on here man with some stuff in common and uh i want to talk about that we're going to talk about that too but i want you to tell everybody how this all kicked off because i heard the story but i want you to tell them and it's so interesting man so go out there and lay it out for my people certainly man i'm originally from chicago illinois and how the music thing kicked off for me, I was in the United States Air Force, stationed in England at a place called RAF Lake and Heat. And this was, uh, I want to say, circa 1992. 1992. So I okay. was married at the time, sitting at home. For those who are veterans, know there's a station called Armed Forces Network. You only mm -hmm. get one TV station in the military when you're That's right. <laughs> and I'm um, sitting at the crib with my bass in my hand, and my wife is sitting on the couch, and the commercial came on for auditions for United States Air Forces in Europe Entertainment Group. Mm -hmm. They were auditioning that day. And I mentioned that, you know, I should go. And I'm, I'm strumming my bass, I got my bass in my hands, it's playing scales, what have you. And my wife says, <laughs> but you won't, because you're a what if. Mm. I said, excuse me? She's like, you won't, because you're a what if. So I said, you know what, let this commercial, let me see what these auditions are. At. Right. So <laughs> I started packing up my acts and everything, and when it came on, it was at another base called RAF Chick Sands. Mm -hmm. So I get the base, I get the location, and I'm like, I'm going to the audition. And to make a long story short, I went, I got accepted. I made it, and before I know it, I was touring Europe with the United States Air Forces in Europe Showcase uh, for mm -hmm. 1992, traveling all over the Air Force bases in Europe, entertaining troops and families. Now, you had said when we talked before, I th the story, I mean, it was like, I love the story that you're telling, but the thing about, tell them about the, with the battery situation. Because that oh, was just you know, like yeah, so yeah. amazing oh, to me. Yeah, so you know, I get to the audition. <laughs> yeah, I, I get to the audition. And of course, anything bad can happen. Can, can happen. So right. I had an active preamp in my base, but I didn't check my battery. So when I go, when it's time for the audition, I plug in, I go to play, and I have no sound. And I can get no sound. I didn't have an extra battery with me. And lucky enough, the bass player, who was also a judge, who was the bass mm -hmm. player on the prior year's showcase, was like, you can use my bass. So I go, cool. And while I'm waiting for the audition, at the same time, there was another uh, gentleman who was there with a camera. Mm -hmm. So he says, hey, um, are you auditioning? I said, yeah. He said, well, let me know. I'm with the Stars and Stripes. For those who don't know, the Stars and Stripes is like the New York Times, a military That's right. uh, periodical. <laughs> you know, it's the newspaper for the service. And so nevertheless, I let him know when I'm going in to do the audition. I do the audition. He takes some pictures. I, I wasn't thinking nothing of it. Right. So audition's over. The following day, I go home and I'm, I'm going to the store, the commissary on base. For those who know, that's like going to your Walmart. That's right. Going to go to the to the commissary, and I, I see a gentleman and his wife. I know, and they're like, uh, "Man, didn't know you played. That's an awesome picture of you in the, in the Stars and Stripes." And I was like, "What?" They're like, "Oh, you haven't seen it." So I grabbed the Stars and Stripes, and there was a full layout. And the article, of course, was about the auditions. However, it was a full length page of me in the Stars and Stripes. Mm -hmm. And so that made it even more for when I got home and showed my wife, like, "Look at this." So, so when we talk, when we about, talk about what, what if, if right? right? Right. What, what if, if there was there no, no bass player bass. there? Like to let you use right. his bass guitar. You know, 
what I, you know, the way that would, would hopefully, what would happen is I would have had to run out to the closest place and try to get a, a nine volt battery. Oh, it was out. a nine volt? I would have yeah, got that for you. You should have hit yeah. me up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I would have probably ran out, saw how, because the auditions were probably still going on. Because for those who don't know, for Air Force Entertainment, I think for that show, we had six male vocalists, six female vocalists, and then they're picking right. the band as well. So, there's a lot of different auditions that are going on. So, I would have tried to fight. You know, to, to, to run out and get me and, and come on back. But I definitely try to make that happen. Yeah. Now, where, did you mention it? But where were you at in Japan? No, this, this was in England. This was actually no, in, England. Was in England. Oh, no, no, that I'm was saying in England. That's in England. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself and I shouldn't okay. do that. Yeah. First of all, I want to say thank you for your service. Thank you. You and I have something in common. And let me tell the people at home, it's a small world. Because when I started reading your bio... You have been to the places that I've been when I was stationed in Japan. Yes. We just didn't know each other. Right. Isn't that crazy? That, I find that so fascinating. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to let you pronounce it. You were sta- I was stationed in Yokosuka. You were at? Marine Corps Air Station, Iwakuni, Japan. My father you, was in the service. I was, I was a dependent right. at the time. Right, because I read the bio, and as a matter of fact, let me hit this off right now. You're going to see his website right there at the bottom of the screen, followed by ours. Do yourself a favor. Go to his website. Check out the story. And, you know, sit back and listen to what we're saying here because my man's here live and he's telling us the story. But a real quote from the Bible, I mean, from the, from the bio, not the Bible, from the bio, it says, um, and I quote from your bio, it says, being a military brat. So it says took him from the U.S. to Iwakuni, Japan, where he completed his sophomore uh, through senior year of high school, performing with local bands. That's how you started cutting your teeth with the local bands. That 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 is it, man. I was always this is I'm what they call I guess an old soul. I will say, right. and I and I'll take you back. I was always into music, and uh, sometimes you don't know your blessings as a kid. You don't know what gifts you've been given. Exactly. You know? And at yep. the same time, your parents create you. However, they don't give you the gifts. Right. You know, they, they watch him emerge and they go, wow, he's talented in this. And then they try to nourish you, you know, blossom. Right. So I say that to say I had an eighth grade teacher by the name of Mr. Langan. OK, I'll go back seventh grade. I went to a magnet school in Southern California. It's called Jefferson right. Junior High. And it was a regular junior high turning to a magnet school. However, I love music and I listen so much that uh, I wanted to play the drums. And right. uh, when it was time for me to pick an instrument, beginning band, there were no more drums. So the music teacher told me, hey, I have a saxophone left. And out of the saxophones, it wasn't a cool, it wasn't a Charlie Parker, it wasn't an alto. <laughs> it wasn't a tenor for Coltrane. It was a baritone sax. And right. a baritone sax, anybody, it sits on the floor and it's almost three feet in height. Right. However, I cut my teeth on that instrument and I went from beginning band to advanced band in one year. So how it's supposed to work is beginning band for people who never played Intermediate band was people who played one year or more. An advanced band were people who played two years or more prior. So my mm-hmm. seventh grade year, I went from beginning band to advanced band in the same year. And I had a wonderful teacher, and that was because of a gentleman made, named Mr. Langan. By the time I got to the eighth grade, Mr. Langan saw me walking down the, uh, the hallway. And uh, he said, what, what, what are you not doing in class? I got kicked out of synthesizer class. It's a true story. School go ahead. oh that sounds like somebody I know. And uh, at the time, <laughs> for those old enough, there was a song called uh, Beethoven's Fifth. It was like a disco version. So being a kid and a synthesizer, I was trying to play the song. Right. The teacher was like, no, what you should be playing is bum, 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 right. bum, bum, bum. She didn't see the talent. I was a little bit more advanced. So I would go back to playing and basically she kicked me out. Mm-hmm. So make a long story short, I'm walking the hall and Mr. Langan sees me. He goes, what are you not doing in class? I said, I got kicked out of synthesizer class. He goes, come in here. And it was, he was teaching acoustic guitar class. Right. So a couple of days go by in acoustic guitar class, and I'm playing the bottom four strings, E, A, D, and G, which are the same strings to make up the bass. Mm-hmm. Well, at that time, in the early 80s, bass was it for R&B music. That's right. And I- so I'm playing boom, 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 boom. And so Mr. Langan, being a very good teacher one day, he doesn't, he doesn't get on me about not playing the chords for the classical talks. Mm-hmm. He's come to the board. And saxophone was treble clef, so he says, this is bass clef. And he, and he has me read the notes at the board, and I get it. He has me a piece of music, right. which is uh, on Broadway by George Benson. Takes me to the closet in the room, and there was a Fender bass and amplifier. So I felt like Rudy, for those who remember Fat Albert, 
Really? Right, right. Uh, yeah. And, and everybody else was playing bed springs and, you know, and buckets. Yeah. So that was my first touch of an electric bass. And so from there, everything just blossomed at that wow. point. Wow. Yeah, I just, hey, 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 Fat Albert, there you go, right? right? <laughs> so to take to your point, when I get to Iwakuni, I was mm-hmm. already playing, and there were a lot of adult bands. They're like, mm-hmm. It was a mix. My graduating class is maybe 20 people. So for those who know military schools, if you have some big schools and some really small schools. Right. And so the kids there just weren't on the same level musically, and there were adult bands looking for bass players. So I started playing with the adult band, which led me to gigging around Japan, the bass and things, mm-hmm. and that, non-commissioned officers club, officers club, things like that. And be, who was this kid? And I played with, I don't care whether it was country, you know, rock, right. jazz. I just love playing bass. Wow. Hey, Japanese game shows. What's What was that about? Uh, Japanese game shows will blow your mind. Because as a kid at the time, were borderline pornography. Like if your parents, you know, but oh, mm-hmm. so you yeah. come to television, and I, honestly, I remember one of the game shows where they were doing like just peeping toms, like just rising up right. in apartment, the bathroom windows of apartments and just catching regular citizens. Like here, you go to jail. Right. So, right. You know, but, but were you playing music at game shows? Yeah, I was playing music at game shows too. So yeah, you're going right. Out. Yeah, so there were game shows. One of the bands that I was in mm-hmm. got picked up, and I can speak at the time Japanese a little bit. So, mm-hmm. they, yeah, because I was type of the, the business manager, I can interpret. So I was right. setting up with gigs, and so yeah, I played. I forgot the name of the Japanese game show. It was almost mm-hmm. like a Price is Right type deal or something. Mm-hmm. Driving it, but we wound up being the house band. We would play when the guests would come up, or as they were playing the game, things of that nature. That also led to me playing at places like the Hiroshima Festival and things like that. So the Flower Festival and. Uh, okay, I got to ask you about that, right? Yeah. I was on one of the first ships, USS Towers, to go back. Now, I'm going to mess it up. You may correct me. You said Hiroshima. You're going to say Hiroshima. I'm going to say Hiroshima. There you go. Exactly. I was on one of the first ships to go back to Hiroshima, Hiroshima, both places, I guess, if you want to call it that. Right. Uh, First ship in 40 years to go back there. Mm. And it was it was something else, man, to go back there to to see everything and, you know, go through the history of it and sure. definitely check it out. So you were you were definitely there. Um, you know, we I was really excited when I saw that whole thing. I was like, oh, former military guy. Oh, I could do this one. I could get this yeah. interview. Definitely, man. So let's talk about what's going on right now, man. OK, so sure. we got a single out that's called She's Strange. Yes. Right? OK, there's also bro, man. Yes. I went out there and tell my people real quick, because we're going to jump into the video right now. She's strange. But tell my people where they can find your music. Man, they can find my music on all streaming platforms, whether it's Apple, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, whatever you, you're streaming on. I'm pretty sure my music is on that, that streaming platform. OK, cool. Amazon, Amazon saying, yeah, all the streaming platforms. My music is there. Or you can go to my website as well. Largebottleproductions.com. OK, so. What we're going to do right now, I'm going to call you Mars for sure, because I'm going to mess up the whole thing. That's what everybody calls Mars. is cool. Call you Mars. Right. All right, people, call the Mars, and you don't want to get in trouble like I did at the beginning of the show. We're going to check out this video. This is called She's Strange, and we'll be back on The Conversation on Roku TV.
Something in our minds will always stay Perhaps this final act was meant To clinch a lifetime argument Nothing comes from violence And nothing ever could For all those born beneath an angry star Welcome back to The Conversation. I am your host, Marquise, and with me today, and like I said, I'm going to cut it short. I'm going to call you Mars. Mars, it is, <laughs> I'm going to call you Mars. Um, let's talk about this right here because I found this very interesting. Large Bottom Productions. Tell my people what is what's what that's all about. Because sorry, I've heard some sorry. of it, but I like what you're doing. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people when they hear it, they're, they're, of course, they're thinking I'm talking about something else. Right. However, being a bass player, the bottom is the foundation. You know, the note that the bass player plays defines the chord. Right. Where Large Bottom comes from, when I was on tour with the Air Force in Europe, we played at Arachleon Air Base, which is on the island of Crete, the Greek yep. island. And yep. so... To the left of me is the Mediterranean Sea. There's people as far as I can see down. It, and so it was an outdoor show. Mm-hmm. It's an application for the outdoor show. The first time I played an outdoor show, had never heard my instrument amplify that loud. Wow. So doing a sound check, and I go up and hear the note thump, bump, and you hear, like, felt like the island shook. You know, wow. a boy was like, man, that's some large bottom. And it just <laughs> so when I when I made my LLC, I, that that name just stuck. I was always Large Bottom Productions from that point. Wow, because you have goals, man. And, and the thing about I, I love about this, when we talked about we had a pre you know interview conversation. What you were talking about was that you are like in midstream. You're doing your music, and you're also looking for other musicians. Correct. To produce theirs. Correct. Yeah. So. Being a songwriting producer, my, my niche is I like songwriting and producing, almost like bass is the foundation. I can be a front man, but it's not my goal. I like to sit back. I like to write, put and put other people out front and try to make them sound as right. good as they can sound with the mix of my technique of songwriting and production. So I have my own sound, but trying to use others and push them out front with a mix of my sound is the collaboration I try to do. I like it. Who was your musical inspir- inspiration? Who was your musical inspiration growing up? Oh, man, let me tell you. It, it can be all over the map. My father used mm-hmm. to sing back in the day. So so he sang some, some doo-wop. So my father was always into, like, the Dells, the Temps, guys with the high falsettos, the harmonies. That was dad's side. Mm-hmm. Mom's side was more jazz, I want to say, in R&B. So I had that mix in the household. However... A lot of influences changed once my father got stationed at Camp Pendleton, California, which is Oceanside, which is a little bit north of San Diego, because now what's considered classic rock wasn't classic. It was just the standard. The right. other thing was music wasn't as segregated. Pop music, like pop radio, yep. you hear, uh, I want to say Stevie Wonder, followed by Elton John, followed by Christopher right. Cross, followed by, it was just this mix. And so good music was good music. And if you wanted to make it a good song, had to really stand on its own as a good song. Right. So my influences, honestly, are from all over. It's like, if I liked you, I liked you. If I'm listening to the Fly Like an Eagle, like the Steve Miller Band. Steve Miller Band, yep. I can jump to James Brown. Then I can go through all, whether it be the Gap Band, you know, uh, I want to say Parliament Funkadelic, all of those type mm-hmm. of moves going back and forth. Like I said, I can jump over to Christopher Cross. Or I can go to Joni Mitchell, Help Me, I Think I'm Falling in Love. Right. You know, these jazz types. So influences were everywhere that I heard music, bro. Yo, I love that because you've shown a lot of versatility along, you know, with the music that you're listening to. You're pulling it in. And that's one thing about a musician, man. A good musician, you're doing the right thing. It's to not be like, look, I just do R&B or I just do like hip hop or whatever. I just do jazz or country. You're taking it all in. I get what the muse, I call it what the muse takes me. I don't fight the muse. So if I'm inspired, if something is country sounding, then that's what I go with because that's what I'm being given. It's almost like, um, not not to get too caught up on the spiritual, but it's like as if if God is speaking to you and and, and he's asking you to write something down. That's what I'm not fighting what I'm being given. I'm trying to write down what's being delivered and it is what it is. Yeah, and you know what? And I respect you for that because a lot of people will fight it and say, well, I'm not supposed to be that type of musician. I'm not supposed to go in that direction. And I think that's where the problem lies with a lot of musicians. They don't want to go ahead and be like, look, man, just go with the flow. 
I'm feeling it spiritually. Wherever I'm going to be leading to, just go. Don't fight it. I love that, man. That's really well, great. Here's the thing, because, of course, everything isn't for anybody. But let's say somebody comes to my website right. and says, hey, do you produce country? Say, hey, these are, these are some songs I have that fit that genre. Right. Hey, do you do smooth jazz? Well, you know, here's some tunes I've written that fit that genre. Hey, right. bro, you got some funk, some R&B. So I have a catalog based off of that inspiration. You know, like I said, good music is good music and a good song stands on its own. How many songs have you heard that might have been a country song that was re- redone by an R&B singer that was redone on the straight ahead jazz version that was done? Mm-hmm. A good song stands on its own, you know, yeah, it's it true over genres, you know, so. So, yeah, so that's our role, bro. Now, I, I will not refute that point at all. You're, you're speaking the truth there. Um, you know, we we dived on this a little bit the other day um, when you started. Until now, you have seen a significant change inside of the music industry, right? The way yes. records are put out, the way things are produced. The way artists are, you know, shuffled around. I think that's the gap we talked about that's no longer there. But how do you feel about the change in the music business today compared to when you started? You know, I have a saying for myself that you can't stop evolution. Mm -hmm. You know, things are in constant change. So I understand if you are born in a genre or things a certain way, but I'm wise enough to know you. We are constantly evolving. People evolve. Technology evolve. That's music right. evolve. Things are from the beginning of time. Things are evolving. You're kind of just caught in the time in, in which you're in. So I don't fight it. I, I'm smart enough to learn how to adapt. You know what I mean? I, I can fight all day and say I love the sound of albums, but man, ain't nobody playing albums unless you're a collector or somebody <laughs> who just really likes albums. You know, it, it's becoming niche now. You know, but I'm not those good. I'm no. I'm not putting my record out on nothing. But albums, I'm not streaming, I'm this and that. So I have to change with the technology and you right. become smart with the technology. And we have, you know. Improvise, adapt and overcome. That, 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 that is it, man. You learn that. It's a military way. That's you know, it, man. You don't man. excuses, man. It's about <laughs> mission. You, you complete the mission any way you can. You That's know? right. Hey, man, if you weren't dabbling in music and putting out music right now, what would you be doing? You know what, man? I would probably be writing. Mm-hmm. I like to write. So in my music, when I do write, if I'm putting lyrics for those who listen, I have four minutes to tell a story. And so I like storytelling right. and I like trying to, to fuse the lyric with the music and give you a short story in four minutes. But if I wasn't doing music, it would probably be more trying to write screenplays or trying to write novels or things of that nature. I'm, I'm working on some things, but I'm so distracted because of the music. But like a sense, like if you take away, they say your vision, you know, your ears get strong. So if music was taken away. I'm pretty sure I would be more into the writing side of things of that nature. That's so, cool, man. You love. got that. You got that backup working. That's what I love about it, man. Some people yeah. go, I don't know, man. I, I guess I, I get a job and I'm like, nah, <laughs> do something else, I guess. But anyway, that that's good, man. Yeah. Um, when you were when you started doing music, were you were you like like back in the day? Because I'm an old man here. And when people got into the music business, it was a goal to get signed. I got to get signed. I got to get signed. I'm trying to get signed. There's no longer like that, that urge today, that sense of urgency in the music business for people to get signed. You mentioned technology, right? Right. You can put some music together. You put it out by yourself. We also talk about having strong marketing when you do it because the game has changed tremendously. And I'm assuming within the next, like maybe 15 years or something like that, the game's going to change again. You know what I mean? You mentioned evolution. Things are going to evolve. Things are going to change over and stuff like that. Certainly. So, yeah. Um, what's next for you? Um, working on an album. Right. Working, working on an album. The, the, the name of the album is The Joyful Elephant. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a compilation of my songwriting and, and production. Wow. And I have a couple of known, known names on there. Carol Riddick will be featured on the single, a remaking of, of Stepping Out. It was done by Joe Jackson. I have that. I'm in talks with Danny Boy, who sang the hook. I ain't mad at you with Tupac. Okay. Uh, so, so working on we're, we're we're in talks right now, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be on the album and some music for that. And it's just a compilation of my songwriting and production and a compilation of work in in one body, basically. Right. So you got some things going on in the background. We need people, my people out there. Definitely keep your eyes out for Marzuk Mars Asante. Yes, sir. Got it right. There you go. Yes, I got sir. it. Got it right. Yes, sir. Yeah, ring that bell, man. You know, I'm getting it up here. Hey, man, it's a pleasure having you on the show. 
I wish you nothing but luck in your musical endeavors. You can find his music on all musical platforms. Go out there, check him out. Go to his website, and uh, yeah, yeah, show Large my man. Some luck. All we have to do is search, look up Large Bottle Productions. That's the artist's name, and that's where you find it. There you go. Hey. I appreciate your time. Mad love to you. Wish you luck in the future and whatnot. We're definitely going to keep in contact because appreciate once you're on the show, Thank you for the you're part of the Jazz Mix 95 family. So, you know, any new joints, anything you send us, you send it our way. We'll definitely play it for you. Appreciate it, man. Got your back. Hey, that's it this week for the conversation. I'm your host, Marquise. And of course, Marzouk Mars Asante. One more time. Thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause there. Yeah, definitely. And we will see you next time on The Conversation on Roku TV. Until then, keep spreading the love. God bless you all. Peace. I will see you next time.